we all know in cybersecurity we are provided with many tools, uh, even operating systems such as Kali Linux, Pirot, and also there are firewalls, uh, security appliances. So everything look uh, ready, right? Uh, so that everyone can get into cybersecurity, start performing essential tasks such as penetration testing or security analysis. However, uh, we have to step back again and think. Uh, behind every real exploit you see and uh, behind every patch or update you see there is a code there's a code that was written to exploit a certain vulnerability or to patch a certain vulnerability that's why or where this is where the importance of coding comes into light understanding basic coding is very essential in cyber security so whether you are hunting bugs building exploits or automating red team ops coding is the secret weapon in this video i'm going to talk about coding or practical use cases uh, of coding in cybersecurity. it's not going to be a long video it's going to be a short video okay uh, where i will be solving two challenges from hack the box they are coding challenges or let me say retired coding challenges uh, created essentially to uh, learn coding in cybersecurity. my recommendation is to go to hack the box Check out the challenges section, click on retired, and from here you will see the list of the coding challenges. Yeah, make sure to uh, use the folder from here, drop down and check coding to rule out all the other categories and focus on coding challenges. So under the retired challenges, you will see around 10 challenges uh, that revolve around coding. You will learn uh, the essentials of coding and you will also apply uh, coding, basically using Python to solve cybersecurity use cases. Uh, in this video, I'm going to solve threat index and triple lock, threat index being the easiest one. And triple lock, despite being easy, it focuses on uh, solving one of the uh, popular cybersecurity use cases, which is detecting failed login attempts, basically, or essentially detecting brute force attacks. Triple lock uh, allows us to do just that. And then you can find the rest of the solutions for these challenges in my blog, where uh, I dedicated a blog post to solve all these challenges. The retired ones, you can find it here, the link in the video description. Okay, so a threat index, if we read through the description, or I think bury the description, just uh, spawn the instance, and from here, when you access the IP and port or the page, you'll be able to read the problem statement. So, in threat index, you are monitoring data streams exiting suspicious store nodes, believed to be part of the empire of Volnaya's covered API infrastructure. As Talion, little byte race, you have been assigned to identify and evaluate indicators of compromise embedded in the exfiltrated traffic. Your job is to scan each stream for high-risk keywords associated with known attack patterns linked to Operation Blackout. Each keyword has a weight, representing its security based on intelligence recovered from earlier breaches. Okay, how to calculate the threat score of each stream? You're going to have to use this formula. Threat score equals sigma, occurrences of keyword, times or multiplies by keyword weight. And here we're given the list of the keywords that we have to look for along with their weight. When we craft the code, we're going to have to use these keywords and we're going to have to use the weight because the weight is essential in the equation of calculating the threat score. So two important elements to calculate the threat score are the keyword weight, which the keyword weight, which is already given for each keyword and the occurrences of keyword. The occurrence of keyword will be calculated based on the provided input. So we assume that the input is provided by the user. So when the input is provided, we're going to have to uh, create a mechanism to scan the input. Here's an example down here. This is the input payload, and this is the uh, long sequence of uh, uh, words and expected output is 60. So what do we have to do? We have to create a script that look for the keywords listed here in this input and calculate how many times each of these keywords appeared in this input. After we calculate how many times, we satisfy the first part of the equation. And we are already given the weight, so implement the equation and we calculate the threat score and we solve the problem. So what's the first thing we have to do here? We have to um, organize the keywords with their weights. To do that, we're going to have to use a dictionary because the dictionary is consisted of the uh, key and its value. This perfectly fits the scenario of a dictionary that holds 
keys and their values. Okay, so I'm going to copy the dictionary right from my uh, blog, the, which contains the walkthrough. This is the uh, dictionary. I'm going to copy this first and paste it in the code area. Click on full screen. So we have now, as you can see, the key, which corresponds to the keyword in our case, and the value. Key value pairs are stored in what is called as the dictionary. Next, we will read the input stream into a variable. We will need then a variable here to read the input uh, from the user. So let's name the variable as n equal to input. When we use the keyword input, we are expecting the user who runs the script to provide the input. And then we will initiate um, a variable named answer that holds the value zero. So it is an integer, right? This, will, this variable will store the final calculated thread score. Okay. Okay, what's the next thing we want to do? We want to create a loop uh, where we can iterate through each keyword from these keywords and the weight of this keyword. So a loop, a for loop is perfect to iterate through this dictionary of keywords and their values. For each keyword, we will count how many times it appeared or it appears in the data and then multiply that number with, with the weight of the said keyword. Then the, the output will be stored in the answer variable. So here we use a for loop. Uh, the for loop, we use two variables, the keyword and its weight. Keyword, weight in, keyword weights. This is the name of the dictionary. And that's where we will iterate through the keywords dot items. And you see here we have the indentation because this is a for loop. I want to, in Python, we have to uh, perform or put the proper indentation in the script. Let's say keyword count. This is the variable that will store the number of occurrences the keyword appears. Equal to n. This is the uh, string that's provided by the user n dot count keyword. Okay, that's how we count how many times through the function count. And then we will store the final uh, value in the answer variable. So answer, we have plus here because uh, it is a shorthand for ans for accumulating the zero with the uh, number or the value that we will calculate based on the given formula, the thread score. So here the thread score equals to keyword count times weight. That's given in the problem statement. We multiply the keyword count with the weight. Okay, so the weight is already defined here and the keyword count is already defined here. And this way we can actually have the uh, thread score calculated. At the end we print the calculated thread score using print answer. So now we go back and we run the code by clicking on run code on the uh, lower right. So now it's running, and before, because the script works, it has uh, given us the flag for this challenge. My favorite one is triple lock, because triple lock is actually the closest to uh, real cybersecurity use cases. So in triple lock, essentially we create, uh, we require to create a script that detects failed login attempts that occur within 10 minutes, and they are equal to, they should be equal to three or more attempts. So here, after we spawn the instance, I'm going to access the page following intel extracted from suspicious store traffic during Operation Blackout. We, you have covered or uncovered a dump of leaked credentials linked to strategic user accounts. Okay, so now I'm not going to continue at the end. Essentially, that's an example. So here, there's an example of, uh, let's say it is a, a log, right, of uh, the success and failed login attempts along with the timestamp and the username. So at the end, we have user one and user three each have made three failed login attempts within 10 minute or within 10 minute window. We have to create a script that achieves the same. We're gonna have to detect who are the users that uh, may have made three or more failed login attempts within a 10 minute window. And this is the problem statement. So here, the input begins with a single line containing two integers, s, 
the number of log entries and n the number of users so if you go to gonna put this on a full screen and we write this code so essentially we start with s and n so they are both equal to going to use a map and use first integer and then we take the input from the user and we split with a space okay let's go back the next step is to track the failed login attempt so we want to keep track of failed login login timestamps for each user here this is a sample input we will use actually a default dictionary to automatically initialize hypothetically initialize a list for each new user we encounter do that we're gonna have to again go back to the code and from here we're gonna enter a new line and from here we use from collections import default dictionary and then user times a new variable default dictionary and put this into a list so essentially then for each of the s log entries we're going to have to uh, do the do the following we're going to have to actually use a for loop here it's the perfect example to uh, mimic the scenario so probably here the for loop is going to have to uh, come after this line so we're going to copy this and then here we create a for loop the for loop i'm going to copy the for loop uh, for speed purposes right from the right up to speed this up i'm going to copy the for loop from here right from the right up so copy the for loop and paste it here so essentially as i said earlier we have to skip if the or skip the entry or the user input if it doesn't mention failure okay and then we want to extract the user id and the timestamp convert the timestamp into total minutes and store it in the dictionary under the appropriate user so here we extract the timestamps, the users, and whether it is a failure or not. Next, we're gonna have to convert the timestamps into uh, actually minutes. So to do that, we're gonna have to create a function. So let's create the function here. I'm gonna copy the function from the right up again for uh, to speed this up. So here we define a helper function, basically named total minutes. To calculate the total number of minutes from the start of the year. Okay. And then to any given timestamp. This is actually easier, or this makes it easier to compare uh, times later. And at the end, we want to detect users with frequent failures. Targeted. And then we create another for loop, user times in. And let me copy the, the for loop from here. Essentially, this is the code. Okay. So what happens here, we saw the timestamps in an ascending order, and then we use a sliding window to check every group of three consecutive timestamps. And then if any group has all three failures within 10 minute span, we mark the user as targeted. That's why I uh, uh, named the variable as targeted. And at the end, we want to display the flagged users, right? Uh, so we're gonna need to use a sort, and also we want to format them into the format mentioned in the uh, uh, in the challenge user underscore the timestamp i'm going to copy this right from the right up so that's how we sort them and then we print them according to the format required so if we try now to execute this code i'm going to exit the full screen and run code you should be given the flag And that is the flag. Super. Take care now. Bye bye then.